Hey everybody, Jane here, and today I'm doing my review of Ready Player One. Ready Player One is a story that follows a character named Wade who lives in a dystopian world. In this world, they are having a lot of problems with poverty, there's been an energy crisis, and life is just not great, particularly for people like Wade. He is living in Oklahoma in the stacks, which are basically just trailers, mobile homes, stacked on top of each other in big, big, tall stacks. And there's a lot of broken down cars because nobody can afford to put gasoline in their cars anymore. And it's just a really rough world. People largely escape that world through a thing called the Oasis, which is kind of a virtual reality world. And even people who are really poor typically have access to the Oasis. Wade has access through his school because he is doing an online school through the Oasis program. He spends a lot of time in the Oasis, as do many people in his world, to kind of escape the difficulties of reality. His parents are both dead and he is living with an aunt who he does not get along with and they actually have like a whole house full of borders because that is the level of poverty they're at is they have this little trailer and there's several several other people in it and it's such a rough situation that Wade largely doesn't actually live there there is um, as I mentioned broken down cars all over the place and he spends a large amount of his time in one of these vans that he has kind of turned into a makeshift home for himself this way he can go to school without being bothered he can keep his personal possessions there without risking them being stolen and sold you know it's it's just his area there was in this world the creator of the oasis his name is Halliday, James Halliday, and when he passed away, he created this game. And basically, he put these special keys that would lead to an Easter egg. And upon his death, everybody was given a clue to where the first key would be to start an adventure for Halliday's Easter egg. And for those who don't know what an Easter egg is, it's something that is hidden in something else. Um... One of the things they talk about with Ready Player One is that the first Easter egg was a creator of a game who put his name in the game because at the time studios weren't allowing the game creators to put their names in in it. Like they didn't they didn't get they didn't credit them. It was just studio credit, studios being credited, it wasn't actual creators. And so the first Easter egg ever was in an Atari game where a creator put his name in. So anyway, Wade becomes obsessed with finding this egg because the person who finds this egg is going to become rich, they're going to get ownership of part of the oasis, and their life worries are going to be over. And of course, Wade is growing up in extreme poverty, his life sucks, this is his only hope of ever getting out of the terrible situation he is in. So. Wade starts to become a gunter, and, and all this kind of happens previous to the beginning of the book, just kind of giving you some background. He becomes a gunter, which are egg hunters, and he spends the book trying to get to this egg, and it's, it's an adventure story. It is largely him questing after this egg. He does meet characters that help and hinder him along the way. At one point, and actually at multiple points, there are real-world consequences to his, his uh, trying to get the egg, and it's, it's a very interesting book that I think I appreciate. I appreciate it because I'm a gamer and a geek. Uh, I do think that really helped. Halliday is obsessed with the 80s, and a large part of being an a gunter is like learning about the 80s and the things in the 80s that Halliday might have been into to help you along your journey. Overall, I gave this book a 4 out of 5. For me, a 4 out of 5 is a book that is above average, but not necessarily a favorite. I really enjoyed the world that was created. 
in the story. I loved the setting. Uh, and when I say setting, I don't mean like the physical, like, trailer park was beautiful. But the whole setting of the story, both in the oasis and kind of in the difficulties of the world, really spoke to me. Because as a gamer, I know that largely we're gaming to escape, the same way people do for television. It's a way to deal with things. You know, life is hard, it's not perfect, and some people do it way more than others. In this world of the Oasis, people's real lives are more or less in the Oasis because their actual lives are just terribly hard. The unemployment is, is high, people are hungry, people, you know, people are living in houses full of other people. It's just a terrible situation. And when you have that, I think escaping into this fantasy is really important. I do know that a lot of people do that in real life as well. Um, when I was married, my husband was a soldier, and he and his friends often were very into video games to the point of like not wanting to deal with real life because it helped them escape. And that actually ended up causing some problems in the relationship because there would be times when I'd be like, hey, can we go do something? No, I've got to meet my friends online. And that's kind of how Wade is largely, you know, that's his world. And his friends are all in the Oasis. He doesn't have friends in real life. Everybody he knows is in the Oasis. And as we know from the online world, not everybody is completely honest about who they are. And it's hard to know people fully when you're just seeing their avatars, and knowing who they are when they're plugged into the Oasis. Plot-wise, I enjoyed it enough to read it. <laughs> I thought it was pretty well-paced. My challenge is I don't typically like adventure stories. This one was good enough to keep me reading, but it's not a thing I typically am, like, drawn to. I did like that a lot of the adventuring involved things that I kind of knew about, like video games, movies from the 80s that I'd at least heard of in some cases. I, I did enjoy that. I did enjoy the concept of the game, this being a whole video game thing. So I did enjoy the plot. I had some issues with it as far as Wade always seeming to be able to overcome the obstacles placed in front of him rather quickly. But, but I'll get into that a little deeper in the spoilers. My biggest challenge with this book was probably the characters. I loved a lot of the characters that Wade was surrounded with. He has some friends in the Oasis, his best friend is H, his love interest is Artemis, and he also has some friends called Daito and Shoto. And I really loved a lot of the side characters, particularly H and Artemis. However, I didn't always like Wade. And that really was one of the things that I struggled with in the book. It's told from first person perspective and some of the ways that Wade views the world may be fine for his character, but they kind of didn't work for me, or they were off-putting to me. Also, there is a point where he is rejected by Artemis because she wants to focus on... She's a gunter too. She wants to focus on the egg, and she feels that the relationship that's been developing between them has really been, like, getting her off course and making her lose focus, and so she wants to cool things down for a while. And his response to that really bothered me. There were some other things that Wade said or did that really bothered me and that made it a little bit harder to love this book. I think if Wade had been a character I liked more and if some of the challenges hadn't been, hadn't felt so, oh, here, this is exactly what you need magically, I probably would have had a better time with it. I didn't have a bad time. It was a four out of five, but just some some criticisms of it that, you know, kind of detracted from my experience because I really thought this was going to be a five out of five. I'd watched the movie and the movie is really good. The movie is also nothing like the book. You can kind of see where it's 
vaguely inspired, but there are so many differences and I'm actually going to be doing a completely different video about the book versus movie. But back to the book. The other thing that I didn't really like was the very end of the book. Things got wrapped up really, really quickly and there is a moment that you're kind of waiting the whole book for and it finally happens but it just didn't feel very satisfying because it almost came way too far into the book. In the movie it had come at a much earlier time and I think that actually worked better because because it just didn't it didn't I just felt there was problems with this coming so late. So those are my very general, very broad thoughts. Now I am going to get into a few spoilers. If you have read the book, feel free to continue. If you don't mind being spoiled, feel free to continue. If you are not into spoilers and plan to read this book, now is a good time for you to pop off and I will see you guys next time. Spoiler section in three two, one. Okay, guys. There were some things in this book that drove me crazy. So, one of the things was Wade was just kind of a douche about things sometimes. And some things I could kind of get. Like, he gives this whole, like, long spiel at the front of the book about how there's no God because life sucks. And I didn't mind the philosophical arguments and things like that. You know, I don't have, like, this, this deep feeling of, oh my gosh, I'm offended by that. He's a character. He can believe what he wants to believe. And yes, he's grown up in a very rough situation. His mother was a prostitute. His dad was killed in a robbery. Uh, his mother was a prostitute within the Oasis. His is my understanding. His dad was killed in a robbery. It's just been a hard life and his aunt is awful to him. And I think in some ways the fact that he doesn't have real world relationships is good, but it also makes it a lot less of an issue when like his aunt is killed by the Sixers. If you have never read this book and you're just in it to find out more about it. The Sixers are the bad guys of this book. They're also trying to get the key, and at one point they try to get entangled with Wade and actually kill him because he is their competition. Him and Artemis and H and Daito and Shoto are who they're most focused on killing because they are the first ones to get the keys. So when they kill his aunt instead of him, it just didn't have the impact that I would have liked it to have because we don't like his aunt. She's not nice to him. She's a terrible human being and he didn't really have much of an emotional, oh my gosh, this is the last person I've already lost my mom and my dad and now my aunt. He's just like, I probably should run away and get an apartment. And I didn't, I, I understood why he felt that way. But at the same time, it just kind of bothered me a little bit that he didn't really have a reaction to that. He just, he doesn't connect well with people, and I think that's kind of the point, because he lives so much in the Oasis. In the movie, they really bring about that point of, this is real life, and the Oasis is pretend, and you need to remember that. But in the book, that's not as much of a theme, like it's touched on and glossed over, but it's not really a super important theme in the book. And I think it maybe should have been, because he really just doesn't, he doesn't people <laughs> well at all, and he doesn't have very good attachments. Similarly, when Artemis tells him, hey, we need to stop, I'm getting off my game because we're spending too much time together, we're not focused, and this relationship thing isn't working, you know, I can't blow this real world opportunity to find the key and have the money and make differences in the world for somebody I only know in the Oasis who could literally be anybody. 
He has been hanging out with Artemis and he likes her a lot, but of course he doesn't know her in real life. And that's what she tells him. And when they break up, when she says, hey, I, I'm not doing this anymore, of all the things he could do, what he does is he basically buys a blow-up doll, plugs it into the Oasis, and goes to a ton of brothels and has sex with a ton of horse to make himself feel better. Which I had a problem with on so many levels. One being, Artemis in his relationship, because it is in the Oasis, is completely cerebral. It wasn't like he was just chasing after her because she was hot. It wasn't like he was just chasing after her so he could have sex with her. He didn't even know 100% sure that she was a girl. You know, they have this relationship because they're hanging out, they're having fun together. And so to go and buy a blow-up doll, I didn't really get why that was what he chose to do. And just kind of throughout the book, there are a lot of times I just did not like Wade. And like, those are some of the moments that really stand out. As far as his journey being too easy, I just felt like there were times, especially mid to end of the book, that he just, everything kind of just happened and fell into place and he didn't have to work for it or it was very coincidental. Like the first couple challenges, okay, he's prepared for this. He knows what to do. And the challenge at the end when he has that coin that he got from the Pac-Man game and we didn't know what it does, it does this magic thing. I was fine with that. I had some issues with the fact that he was the only one to play the guitar and see the sign, and so he knows the clue that nobody else has figured out. Because, you know, he just happens to. And similarly, when he breaks into the Sixer headquarters as a, a debtor, and he's all like, yeah, I got their passwords and stuff off the internet, it's gonna be fine. That whole thing was just really far-fetched to me, and I was like, we didn't see that happen. We didn't see you go get that. So then when you're breaking into the Sixer headquarters and you're like, I hope this works, it just, it felt cheap. And also I was really bothered too by the fact that Og came along and helped them. And he's all like, I have been keeping my eye on you. And you know, I want to make sure that you guys win the contest and I'm going to help you. It, it just felt like there was always something that was unearned and not everything again because the coin was unearned and then like him being able to beat joust because he played it a million times like those things were earned but there was a lot of unearned things that I felt happened and for me that kind of cheapened some of the things that happened in the plot. I also was really kind of bummed out by the epic battle at the end because in parts of the book they have moved to, you know, up the stakes in the real world with, like, Daito being murdered and, and Wade's aunt being murdered. So real people have died. But in this epic battle at the end with the Gunters and the Sixers, I just didn't feel that intensely about the stakes because the only thing that is going to happen to these avatars who have gathered to help the fight is they're going to be reset. They're going to come back as level one avatars, and yes, that's a big deal in that world. You lose your money, you lose your stuff, and I get that, but it just, for as epic as this battle was meant to feel, the, the consequences were minimal, uh, a game reset. So I really had some mixed feelings about the stakes of that battle. The other thing that really bothered me was... When he meets Artemis in real life, we've been spending the whole book waiting for them to meet. We have been wanting them to get together because Wade wants them to get together. And, you know, that's, I was listening to audio, it, this on audiobook, and it is literally eight minutes at the end of the book that of the audiobook that, you know, he goes out to the garden and he sees her and he likes her even though she isn't super hot. And, you know, I think they kiss and that was it. You know, we don't, 
Yes, he, he shared his fortune with her, but are they going to have a real happily ever after? You know, what about the fact that, you know, up until this point, he's really been into it for himself. And, and he kind of has a conversation about that with her, that he's not really into it for himself now. You know, he's, they can use the money to change the world. And it, it's not just a selfish thing anymore. Because that's the other thing. Like, I loved Artemis. She wanted to get the eggs so that she could make changes. She wanted to make sure that the hungry were fed. She wanted to make the world a better place. And Wade, I think he said he wanted to build a space station so that he didn't have to deal with people. And they're just very different people. And I didn't, you know, we don't get to see any indication that in the real world, now that they are not Gunters anymore, and they've laid that aside, that they're going to get a happily ever after. And mind you, they're teenagers. Maybe they won't get a happily ever after. But, you know, a happy for now. A real happy for now. Um, they really had almost no interaction as people. We did get some interaction with H as a person, and I really liked that. And I really liked H and who H turned out to be. I thought that was brilliant and brilliantly done. I don't think we really got to know much about Shoto as, like, who he was in real life. Because, again, him and Wade meet very briefly at the end of the book, but they don't really spend a lot of time together. Most of the time we're spent is with these character avatars, and I felt like that was a missed opportunity in many ways. So, especially because I saw the movie first, and I actually rewatched the movie, and in the movie, and I know that the movie and the book are two different things for two different mediums, but in the movie and the book, Wade spends quite a bit of time with these friends in real life, and I think we could have used a lot more of that in this book. So there were things that I that I didn't enjoy, that I wasn't into, but overall it was a good book. Overall I like the world, overall I like the, the video game aspect, I liked a lot of the side characters even though I wasn't always crazy about Wade. It made me think a lot about, you know, what our future in video games is, and, and in the virtual world. Um, particularly, Wade goes to a virtual school, and because of COVID, my daughters are doing a virtual school, but like, Wade's virtual school is how virtual school should be. <laughs> and I'm really bummed that the teachers and stuff now don't have a way to make virtual school more interactive. I mean, we have this technology now. We already have VR machines, we have video games, we have all kinds of ways to make education really interactive. And in Wade's school, they're almost like riding the magic school bus every day. They're like, hey, we're gonna go explore a heart, we're gonna go explore a volcano, we're gonna look into this time in history, we're gonna go to the Battle of Gettysburg and see what happened. And, you know, we have the technology to a point to do that. And that's not what our schools are doing during pandemic schooling. And so I really enjoyed the part with Wade's school and going, I really wish my kids were getting this kind of education. And wouldn't it be cool if in the future we have this on these online learning options to be more interactive? Um, because I think it would help kids to learn by experiencing it rather than just reading facts in a book. So overall... Those are my thoughts on Ready Player One. I will be doing a book versus movie video, um, and I'll talk a little about how the book and the movie were different, what I thought each did well, what I thought the other did a little better. And yeah, I hope to see you then. Uh, this book was definitely worth reading, especially if you are a gamer, and overall, I did have a good time. Please like if you enjoyed this content. Please subscribe if you are not already subscribed. My social media is below if you would like to contact me outside of YouTube. Also below are links to my books. I am a romance novelist and I use this platform to help share information about my books. So when you buy books, it supports me making more videos and reviews for you. I have books that are available to try for free if you are in the Kindle Unlimited program. I have books in Overdrive, so if your library is part of the 
the overdrive system you may be able to check out my books from your library for free also i have books on audible so if you are an audible member or you have audible credits you can pick up one of my books for free if you would like my books are also available in ebook form and in paperbacks most places books are sold kobo barnes and noble amazon so i hope that if romance is something you enjoy, you'll give my books a try. It helps support this channel. Thank you and have a good day.